And Rish was just talking there about the proposals that you've put forward to ease visa restrictions here in China to help with the search for talent. And you've also talked about how Trump's crackdown on immigration provides something of an opportunity to tech companies like yours here in China. How do you plan to take advantage of what you see as an opportunity? Yeah, I think right now at least uh, there's a perception that uh, the Trump administration is kind of anti-immigrant. Uh, whereas uh, for China, if you have listened to uh, President Xi Jinping's uh, Davos speech, you, you all get a clear sense that China is more open than ever, especially for global talent. And China is willing to take on the responsibility as a, as a large economy, a large and fast-growing economy. Uh, in fact, I think a, a high growth rate will automatically generate a lot of opportunities. And people uh, naturally wants to go to uh, a market uh, where there are more opportunities than, than elsewhere. So in, in Chinese, we generally say people always naturally go upwards and water naturally flows down. It, it's just like that. But uh, in the past, China was not uh, a, a country known for embracing uh, immigrants, global talents. And there are lots of policies we need to improve and uh, we need to also, uh, also uh, make it more clear and, and let more people know that uh, China welcomes all kinds of talents from all nationalities, all kinds of different cultures, backgrounds. And what steps will you be taking as the head of Baidu to, to attract that talent? Because it is a fierce battle, isn't it, yes, uh, in the yes. US and globally for that tech talent. I looked uh -huh. on your website, you had a, at least a dozen uh, posts available right. Right. Uh, trying to recruit engineers mm -hmm. in the US. So how, how, what steps are you going to take? Uh, well, we already have a research center in Silicon Valley with uh, more than 100 uh, scientists and engineers. Uh, so we attract, we already attracted a lot of uh, uh, bright talents over there. In China, we also have like more than 10,000 engineers. I think great people attract greater people. So uh, we already have a very good talent pool. That's one thing. The other thing is that uh, uh, China is a large market. Right. Uh, in the age of AI, I think uh, size matters. And when you have such a large size, you can try a lot of things. You encounter new problems before anyone else encounters. Then you try to solve it. You have lots of data. Um, people, smart people always have ideas. They have lots and lots of ideas. And uh, we have an environment, we have a platform that they can try it on. I generally say, okay, if you have an idea, let's take 1% of our, our traffic and try it on. What does 1% mean? It means hundreds, millions of people, millions of people who speak the same language with the same culture be the same law, right? It's very hard to find this kind of scale anywhere else. And you can do great things with this kind of scale. Uh, more broadly, yeah. how concerned are you about the potential for rising trade tensions between US and China and the implications for companies like yours that operate in both countries? Uh, yeah, I, I think trade war is bad for everyone. Uh, it, it's so clear. I, I think uh, uh, people or, or politicians are just using that as a bargain chip to try to get more. They all understand it, it's going to hurt everybody. I don't like that. Uh, but uh, speaking of Baidu, we, we have research facilities in the U.S. We, we hire people, we provide uh, uh, um, jobs, and we pay taxes, but we actually don't have a lot of revenue there. So we, we, uh, if something bad happens, we are not the ones who get hurt the most. Uh, I also think there are uh, great communication channels between the U.S. and, and uh, China, both in the private sector and in the public se sector. So the possibility of uh, you know a, a misunderstanding is is kind of low. It's just uh, each side try to find the right balance, and uh, it, it's a give and take. It's a deal making to me. I know that this week you put forward proposals to legislatures here in Beijing about adopting artificial intelligence more widely, for example, to help control the traffic problems that we have here in Beijing. How were those proposals received? Well, it, it was received very well. I think uh, people, especially do the, during the two sessions, they care a lot about uh, ordinary people's life. And the proposals I uh, uh, take are uh, all related to people's daily life. The, the traffic light thing, using artificial intelligence to really improve the, uh, uh, the, the uh, 
the reasonableness of uh, how long you have to wait. We have done experiments in, uh, around our campus, and it worked very well. So uh, if implemented, uh, the, the traffic jam problem will be eased. Uh, significantly, more than 10% at least. And another proposal is about uh, uh, using AI, using face recognition to, uh, to help find uh, missing children. Uh, let's say if one child is, uh, uh, was missed at, like, uh, uh, at three years old, even after you know, five years of when, when, when he or she goes to school, take a picture, we are able to find the right match very accurately. So this kind of uh, things can benefit ordinary people on a, on a daily basis. And uh, this is just a, you know, two of the examples. I can think of thousands of thousands of examples like this. AI is an expensive venture. How much are you spending on R&D in AI in the next 12 to 18 months? Uh, I think our, our spending in R&D will continue to go up. Over the past uh, couple of years, we spend roughly about 15% uh, of our total revenue in, in R&D, and most of them uh, went into uh, artificial intelligence related. Uh, and I, I think uh, the era of uh, mobile internet has ended, and the era of artificial intelligence has arrived. It's just that most people haven't really realized that. We realize that, and we are going to aggressively invest in, in AI, and I think it's going to benefit a lot of uh, people, and it's going to transform industry after industry. And what, what are you learning from your R&D centers in terms of applications, and applications that can be commercialized yeah. in the next, say, 12 to 24 months? Uh, right. There are lots of lots of applications that can uh, can uh, uh, impact people's daily life. Uh, the most obvious one is actually search. I think AI transformed the search first before any other industry. Because today you can use the voice to do the search. You can take a picture to find out what kind of plant is that, right? You couldn't do that five years ago. That's because of AI. You use voice recognition, you use computer vision to find out what the user wants. And uh, this can, ex can be extended to many other areas. Uh, for example, if you go to the Baidu campus, you, you go through a security gate. Uh, uh, Baidu employees do not need to use their badge. They can just, uh, uh, just walk through and uh, our camera will rec automatically recognize their face and let them in. Uh, think about that, that. It can be applied to many, many other scenarios. For example, when you go to an airport, you, you go through the security check, you have to hand in your ID. There are lots of hassles today. But that do, is no longer needed when you have AI technology in place. Wherever you go, when your ID needs to be checked, it will be checked automatically using your face. You, you don't need to carry your ID, carry a badge around. You, you don't need to remember a lot of things. It's going to be very, very natural for people. You've invested in AI and VR companies recently. Are you planning any more bolt-on acquisitions in this year? Uh, I think our pace of uh, acquisition will be roughly the same. I, I think there are always opportunities. There are always great entrepreneurs who do uh, great innovations. If we find a match, if we find the synergy between Baidu and uh, other companies is strong enough, we'll make an acquisition. Uh, but I, I don't have a you know, concrete goal or, or target of where to go or what, what companies to buy. Uh, let's talk about driverless cars, because yeah. you've made progress there. At what stage would you consider going it alone? Or are you always going to be partnering up with the automakers? Would you ever consider just building your own car from scratch? Well, I think we, uh, we are still focusing on making the uh, driverless car technology work. And we'll worry about the BINS model later. But uh, I think uh, more than likely we will be partner with uh, a lot of uh, automakers. Uh, they have their uh, strengths, we have our strengths. Uh, the, the goal is to really make it happen, make, uh, make it uh, into reality, let people enjoy the benefit of driverless cars. We will do whatever it takes to, uh, to achieve that goal. I, I think uh, you know, revenue and profit goes next. We, we, we're not really after uh, profit for this kind of thing. There, there have been reports that you would be investing $100 million in Next EV, an electric vehicle maker here in China. Can you confirm those reports? 
Well, I, I cannot. Uh, rumors are always rumors. We don't really comment on this kind of mergers, acquisition, or investment deals. Okay, and yeah. you've, you've, you've consolidated your, your car unit. Would it ever be part of the plan, even to have it on, on the shelf, to spin off the auto unit at some point? Would that ever be a potential possibility? That is certainly a, a possibility. I think uh, um, um, at one point when we think uh, the business is uh, promising enough and uh, uh, it has reached a stage that uh, uh, running it independently or introducing more strategic investors would make sense, we'll do that. But right now, again, as I said, uh, uh, right now it's kind of early because we are still focusing on making the, the technology, especially the software part, work and we will do that first. And do you have any more details on the time frame? I know we've heard about uh, potentially mass production of driverless cars powered by Baidu systems by 2020, 2021. Can you give us any more details on the, on the time frame? Yeah, I think you are right. 2020, 2021 is a, is a good uh, uh, guess of when the uh, mass production will come to, uh, to reality. Uh, I think we, we are still on track. Uh, again, uh, there are lots of technologies, we, uh, problems we, we need to uh, work out, but uh, we are quite confident that, uh, uh, that they will, will come as planned.